Hey, Aaron Jenny, I hope you're doing well. In today's review, we're going to talk all about Robert Kiyosaki's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So this is going to be a Rich Dad, Poor Dad review. Um, if you are checking out this book or maybe you're like, hmm, should I read this book? Should I get it? Is it a good book or is it just, you know, kind of wasted information, wasted time? Let's talk all about this book. Um, this is actually one of the oldies, an oldie but a goodie, a, a real classic, honestly, in terms of financial education and uh, understanding wealth and, and growing your, 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 your business. Um, this book is actually 25 years old. Can you believe that? It came out in 1997. I read it when it first came out. I was 15 at the time, so I'm actually 40 years old now, right? So 25 years ago today, crazy stuff uh, was introduced to this book by my sister, and it changed my life. It's really interesting because a lot of the stuff that I read in this book at, when I was 15, I didn't even realize, but I guess subliminal messaging and, you know, once you read something like this, you kind of kind of go down that direction uh, in, in, and I, I actually implemented a lot of stuff that Robert teaches so let's talk about it uh, in, in more detail today so the first thing is that this book is all about financial education okay it's about it ex explaining to you that a lot of people don't understand uh, financial education and what they teach you in school isn't really setting you up to be successful in life okay the reality is is that in school what they're actually teaching you is they're teaching you things that will train you to become a good employee, but not necessarily a good entrepreneur, right? So they don't tr teach entrepreneurship in most traditional schools, if you think about it. So Robert is all about you know, how the education system is broken, um, how they are not really setting you up for understanding how to manage your money and how to kind of be a slave for the rest of your life, which is very, very true. So it's about his two dads. He's got a rich dad and he's got a poor dad. His poor dad is his real dad. His rich dad is his uh, father's friend, okay? Um, and his rich, you know, what he calls his rich dad is the guy who basically gives him all this advice on how to understand money how to control his own money, how to pay as little taxes as possible, and how to generate as much revenue and profit in his life as possible. So it's all about teaching him how to transition from an employee mindset to a entrepreneurial mindset where you can start a business, become a business owner, and then learn to create a lot more wealth for yourself. And then how do you take that wealth and then how do you invest it, okay? So a couple of the strategies that he, te he teaches in this book is first of all, you know, before you actually um, you know, go out there and start a business, you do need to make as much money as you can to have some capital to get started up, right? So inside of the first few chapters, he talks about the different types of careers that you can get. Um, and one of the big careers that he recommends is actually becoming a salesperson, right? Because the thing about jobs is, um, you know, the only job that can pay you more money then your base salary is, is sales, right? Because sales is all about performance. So even if you're in a sales job for maybe five hours a day or three hours a day or eight hours a day, in that time that you're in that job, if you work very, very hard, you can generate commissions and you can make even more sales, right? And then when you make more money, that allows you to create more capital for you to then go and build some sort of business out there, right? And that's what I did. It's really weird because my first job, you know, I, I'm a, a trained, um, you know, um, I, ha I have a, a finance degree basically from Melbourne Uni. And I didn't even know what I was gonna do with that finance degree. And it was, it's interesting because when I graduated, I couldn't really find that right financial job. And in the end, I end up, ended up moving to China and I ended up getting a sales job, a sales job in finance. It was really funny. I was selling mutual funds. I got really good at it, became the top salesperson at the end of year four. And then um, I kind of left and then came back home and started my, my own online business, right? So I was in sales and, and I, I generated a lot of income through sales, a lot of commissions. Um, and I used that income to parlay it into a business which I then started online. Wasn't very successful in my first three years, so I had to go, you know, leave that business and then get another sales job, which I then became, again, the top salesperson in that job. But it, could, it allowed that sales career allowed me to amass quite a lot of savings, which I then put into another business and then finally had you know, a lot of success, right? So that advice from Robert, Actually, if he never told me about sales, I never even would have considered a sales job because a lot of people think that sales is a dirty word, right? Nobody wants to do sales. They're like, ugh, sales. I don't want to become a salesperson, right? But the reality is, is that if you really think about it, the number one salesperson in any company is a CEO, right? They're the visionary. They're the guys that rub shoulders. They're the guys that go out there and bring in the sales, right? So the CEO is actually a top salesperson in the company. A lot of people don't know this, right? And sales actually drives the revenue of almost every single company out there. So sales is actually an essential part 
of any organization and if you get into sales and you get good at it, it's gonna set you up for the future because you're learning so many skills in that sales job. You're learning how to sell, you're learning how to drive revenue, you're learning how to be personable, you're learning how to close. I mean, it's, uh, it's so important, right? Uh, in, in your overall development uh, as, as, a, as a person, okay? Another thing that he teaches is, is um, all about creating leverage and understanding um, that you know you need to be able to let money work for itself instead of you working for that money right because if you're always putting your time into working for money like a normal job and that salary then you're never gonna grow beyond that salary which is a problem because most people nowadays when they work a full-time job um, they don't there's not enough money for the month you know what i mean they run out of money before the month finishes and that's why so many people are in debt so that's also something he talks about he talks about credit cards and debt and how you need to save and how you need to invest and so you know all this stuff sounds really simple but he breaks it down in a really really good way and in a really interesting way where he you know he compares notes from his rich dad and his and his real father who's the poor dad and it just becomes such an interesting journey um, and he kind of takes you through exactly how you need to set yourself up in order for you to have the most success, right? Now, in the end, the book is really all about starting a business, about how corporations pay the least amount of tax and how individuals like, you know, you and me, you know, people that work normal full-time jobs, like, oh, well, I don't do that anymore because I don't work a full-time job anymore. But when I did, we pay the most tax, okay? Because you're playing, you're paying employee tax um, and you're making the least amount of money. So we're paying the most amount of taxes, but we're making the least amount of money and you're just put in a very, very bad position that way. It's very difficult to save, it's very difficult to excel, and it's very difficult to grow beyond your means, unfortunately, right? You can't really create leverage when you're making the same amount of money on a salary, no matter how much work you put in, okay? So this book, changed my life. I mean, it's a, basically it's a personal financial education book. I highly recommend, everybody needs to read this book. And even though this book is 25 years old, crazy, right? At the time of recording this video, I actually bought the, the updated version. So updated version, I think I bought this about three or four years ago. This, this version is about five years old. Um, but it's so good. It's such a good book. And this is why this book continues to rank so high on a lot of people's, you know, must, read book lists, right? Because he makes the journey fun. Um, you know, he tells a story about his rich dad and poor dad, and at the same time, he's educating you about personal finance. I mean, this is, you know, this book should be part of, I think, university and school curriculums because it's just an essential part of learning how to grow your wealth. So um, I think this is a great book, you know? It, it, Robert is, is awesome, he still teaches today. He's got a lot of, you know, good stuff going on. He's got his, his, his um, He's got his uh, game for kids and he's got a lot of other books, but I still think that this is his, his ultimate you know, work of art. So if you haven't read R Rich Dad, Poor Dad, I highly recommend that you get it. I mean, it's not expensive. You know, just go to your nearest bookstore, go to Amazon, pick up a copy. Um, I think this book is awesome, it changed my life. And I actually, I, I've implemented a lot of stuff that Robert has, has taught. Um, and that's how I became a self-made millionaire. So highly recommend that you check out this book. Um, and that's my review of Rich Dad Poor Dad. And if you are here and you're still on this video, you got to the end and you're like, Aaron, you know, what can I do? What else can I do besides, you know, reading Robert's Rich Dad Poor Dad to help myself, you know, get out of debt or create more income, maybe even start a business if that's where your head's at right now. And I highly recommend that, that you do start thinking like that. I wanna take it one step further and, and tell you that if you do decide to start a business, don't start a traditional business, right? You know, this, this book is pretty old in the sense that, again, it, was, it came out in 1997. Um, what Robert didn't know at the time is that the internet is so powerful that you can start a digital business, okay, online, and you can create everything that he speaks about in the book, but you can do it in the digital world, which is so powerful, and that's what I did um, when I started my business in 2009. Again, it took me a while. Um, to have success, but when I finally broke through in 2016, I mean, it just completely changed my life, right? So if you would like to learn how to build a business and do it online and do everything digital, I have a free six-figure workshop that I would like you to check out if you want. All you need to do is just click on the link in the description box or the comment section below. Go through that workshop, absolutely free, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I did, how I broke through, how I created multiple six figures online, um, how I was able to quit my full-time job in 2019, um, and how I was able to basically replicate what 
Robert was talking about or is talking about in his book, uh, but do everything online, do it digital. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope to see you in the workshop. Take care.